pending home sales rose 2.5% in September, according to a new report from Redfin. That is the biggest monthly increase in over a year and a half. Redfin attributing the rise in housing contract activity to falling mortgage rates and the Fed's rate cut trajectory. But for the past three weeks, we're actually seeing some mortgage rates rise. Here to react to what we're seeing in the entirety of the housing landscape, we've got Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman. Great to have you back on, and thanks so much for taking the time here, Glenn. First and foremost, just, just a broad read on what you're seeing in the mind of potential home buyers as it relates to mortgage rates, sure, moving a little bit higher over the past couple of weeks here. Home buyers have mostly been resilient. So mortgage purchase applications are down 7% for the week. People do respond to higher rates, but I think they're being opportunistic because there's so much volatility in rates right now where they're bouncing up and down from day to day and week to week. We see people trying to lock a rate on a Friday before it goes up on a Monday um, and trying to get under contract on that. There was a huge psychological milestone on September 18th when the Fed did make its rate cut. Mortgage rates had already priced that in. So I had been skeptical that home buyers would really react when the Fed made its move, but they did. So that has been a sea change in our business, uh, a sea change in the real estate industry where home buyers are back at a time when usually they're battening down the hatches for the holidays. I want to come back to that stat that we were mentioning a moment ago and home prices seeing that biggest increase since March. You know, ultimately here, what are you seeing and tracking among the home buyers that are running the calculus uh, upon mm -hmm. whether or not they want to go after some inventory that's already listed and already on the market mm -hmm. versus yeah. a, a fresh and newer build out? Yeah, well, that's always a difficult calculus. There's usually a premium on new construction, and some of the stale listings from the summer are going for less than the asking price. So sometimes we tell our customers right now, if it looks like you can't afford it, you might be able to do that. Rates have affected affordability. So over the past few weeks, the median monthly mortgage payment is up by about 100 bucks, but it's down $300 from where it was in April. So people are still staying in the game. I think if rates went higher, that would obviously deter them. Um, but there's a feeling like we're going to stick around here and see if we can get a deal because next spring, uh, it might be a much frothier market where bidding wars come back. And so with that in mind, if bidding wars were to return and then you would see perhaps a, a driving up of prices even further with more participants in the marketplace, how critical then on the kind of new home side would it be for some of those buy downs? And, and that really changed the thinking around where people are bidding in to existing offerings and existing listings versus where they're saying, hey, you know what, this might come at a premium, but at least there's a buy down. And, and how do you kind of monitor where yeah. that is impacting the existing listing side of the market as well? Well, I think builders are just competing with home sellers in a different way. So if you're a builder and you've got 50 units, you want to maintain your price and secretly discount it by offering a bought down rate. Whereas a seller just doesn't care about the other listings in the neighborhood. So she's just happy to lower the list price and say, here it is. And even if that gets into the public records, it doesn't bother me. I shouldn't say happy to lower it, but um, there's just... Uh, less of a shell game in terms of how the money is moving around. So a buy down rate is a real advantage. Um, I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth, but I do think that it's just a price discount in another form. And, you know, most listings, uh, when they don't sell in the first 30 days, do the same thing. They just don't buy down the rate. They cut their home price. Glenn, we're about uh, inside of four weeks from the U.S. general election here, and it, and it seems like, especially based on some of the data that you and your team have been able to publish and, and really survey and find out, uh, home buyers, first-time home buyers, nearly a quarter of them holding off until after the election yeah. to buy a home. And, and so what does that tell you about either, number one, the pent-up demand sitting on the sideline, but then two, which way that could go if the yeah. buyer's candidate doesn't win. Well, it might be a commentary on just how divided America is because half of Americans think it'll be a disaster if Kamala Harris wins and the other half think it'll be an economic disaster if Donald Trump wins. And so I have been surprised how many home buyers 
think that everything is going to change on November 6th. And I know both candidates have ambitious plans to increase housing supply. I'm glad to see it, uh, but they do have to get those bills passed. And so, you know, the first reaction is just going to be animal spirits. You know, how do people feel about America now that Kamala is president or now that Trump is president? So um, I think many people are waiting um, in the same way they were waiting on the Fed. Uh, when the Fed made its cut, it didn't actually affect mortgage rates, but it did affect consumer psychology. And I think when the election is over, it won't actually immediately affect inventory, home prices or anything like that, but it might affect home buyer and home seller psychology. With that in mind, are, are there certain markets that you would be tracking where there could be a major delta in the difference between a Harris win or a Trump win? No, not really. I mean, the markets that we're tracking right now are in Florida just because we're so worried about how folks are doing down there. There's obviously the direct impact from the hurricane, but also the collateral damage uh, to the insurance market. It is just so expensive to buy a house. Most people think about the rate and the home price, but now there's a third factor in places like California and Florida, which is, can I afford the insurance? That's not a small chunk of change. Yeah, no, a huge impact and a huge consideration, especially for those who are looking at buying a home and trying to figure out, okay, you know, with the billion dollar disasters as NOAA tracks, you know, what is the best option for you, yourself, your family? Redfin CEO, Glenn Kelman, thanks so much for taking the time. I love being here. Thanks for having <laughs> we me. We love having you on. Bye. Thanks so much, Glenn.